Huge news during Apple's event today. The iPad Pro and iPad Air event saw the release of Final Cut Pro for iPad version 2, as well as an all-new app called Final Cut Camera. A press release was also released at the same time as the presentation, announcing the release of Final Cut Pro 10.8. In this video, we're going to talk about all the new features in 10.8. As of the recording of this video, I have not been able to download and install 10.8 and see it firsthand, but we'll take a look at the press release and some of the press images that were released by Apple to get a closer look at all the new updates that we can expect. Now they still haven't released the release notes as well for 10.8, so we don't have a lot of information about the details of stability improvements, bug fixes, anything else that they've done that wasn't worthy of being put in the press release. But look at the love that we saw from Apple during this event. We saw Final Cut Pro really take center stage during the event, and it makes sense because they're trying to sell uh, Final Cut for um, iPad and sell more iPad Pros, but it was really exciting to see some of these new features. Again, we're not going to dwell on Final Cut Pro for iPad. Just wanted to say that for a lot of us who are big Final Cut fans, it was exciting to see so much love for Final Cut in an Apple presentation. But let's jump out of this and take a look at this press release as we go through some of the features that have been added to Final Cut Pro for Mac. The first one I want to talk about is something called Enhance Light and Color. And I have to imagine that this maybe was motivated by a feature that might be present in Final Cut Pro for iPad. A lot of the iPad features are sort of those like one-click magic button fix-it uh, type of things. And for these two programs to be compatible, they have to have a version of it for Final Cut Pro for Mac and Final Cut Pro for iPad. You can see here, and it may be a little difficult for you to see, but you can see they've got um, this here. This is going to be all pixelated, so my apologies. But if you look at the press release, which I'll have linked down in the description, you'll be able to see um, this new feature. Now, what do they say about this feature? Let's take a look really quickly at what they, uh, what they call it. Um, here we go. Enhance light and color, offering the ability to improve color, color balance, contrast, and brightness in one simple step, and is optimized for SDR, HDR, RAW, and log encoded media. So that's one of the first features. Now you can see here on the text of the press release, we also have a feature called Smooth Slow Mo, where frames of video are intelligently generated and blended together, providing the highest quality movement and more adding more drama to the project. Now we've seen a lot of third-party apps and plugins that can do this. I don't know if Topaz AI is one of them, um, but there's been some other apps where you could take footage that was recorded in lower frame rates, frame rates like 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second and make them look super slow-mo as if they were shot in 120 or 240 frames per second, which is a really cool feature. I'm excited to use this. I don't do a lot of slow-mo stuff, but I just did in a video that I made and it looked all choppy and kind of messy. I had to roll with it because I didn't really have an option to do anything else, but this would help me in that situation, so already I know it's something that I'm going to be using. Um, the big one, the big update was custom names for color corrections and video effects. This one is huge, and I'm going to see if they have, yeah, here we go, we've got this right here, where we can name our corrections and effects with custom wording. This is really helpful to be able to visually orient yourself when you're looking at the inspector window to understand what effects you're, you're uh, looking at and which ones you want to access to maybe adjust or tweak. Now, something that's in the press release that I didn't notice during my live stream that I'm really excited about, um, I wrote this down. Oh, I didn't write it down, so it's up here. Um, for efficiency and post-production workflows, color corrections and video effects can now be given custom names in the inspector to easily identify changes applied to a clip. Very cool, right? Here's the cool part. And effects can be dragged from the inspector to other clips in your timeline or in the viewer window. So if you're looking at a clip that does not have certain effects or color corrections applied to it, Instead of going to the clip where those effects or color corrections exist, hitting copy, hitting command shift V, selecting which ones you want to add to that clip, 
Now you can click and drag directly from the inspector and drag them onto the viewer window and those effects will be applied to your clip. I think this is an awesome feature, something that I didn't really know I needed, but now that I know it exists, I want to, I want to be able to use it. This is going to be something that really speeds up my workflow especially, so I'm very excited about that. Um, this, that one's pretty huge. So what else do we have as far as updates go? Um, we've got find clips that are missing media or effects using the timeline index. So the timeline index is one of my favorite features in Final Cut Pro. And now you'll be able to um, type in the search box in the timeline index and zero in on any clips where you're missing media or missing effects. And that's gonna be really helpful for those of us that maybe are sharing projects or sending stuff back and forth using Post Lab, multiple editor workflows, or if you're maybe a little less organized with your media and effects, it's gonna help you zero in on that stuff when you're using Final Cut Pro. They've also added in the timeline index, and I'm gonna to switch to my main angle here while I talk about this. Find clips, uh, sorry, use the timeline index to search for clips using additional information like the reel number, the scene number, the camera angle, and more. So for those of us with really complex timelines, we're gonna be able to do more with the timeline index to really search for the things that we need to find. This is especially helpful to documentary and feature film editors, and hopefully this is a feature that seemed obvious to implement in the Final Cut Pro, but now that it's there, they can really um, take their work to the next level, even if it's not like a huge revolutionary thing. So those are the updates as far as I can tell from the press release. And I think the one that I'm most excited about is again, being able to custom name effects and color correction and now drag those effects from the inspector window onto the viewer or into the timeline. That's really exciting. The last thing I wanna say is Final Cut 10.7 came out just this past November. So within six months, we saw them jump up a complete version from 10.7 to 10.8. And I still haven't seen the release notes. So as soon as we see release notes, if there's any new features in there, keyboard shortcuts, stability improvements, bug fixes, um, especially bugs that have really been nagging at people. Follow me on social media. Um, there's links down in the description uh, to follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, or you can obviously subscribe to this channel and be a part of the community page where I post regular updates about the things I'm finding about Final Cut Pro. Now, next on the channel, what I'm hoping to do is to actually get 10.8 downloaded and installed and do a full walkthrough, whether it's a live stream or a made video. But this is uh, really exciting news. I wasn't expecting a 10.8 announcement until WWDC, but it does make sense with the Final Cut Pro for iPad 2 app being launched and the Final Cut camera app being launched that they would do a 10.8 release as well because those apps have to depend or they, they depend on each other for interoperability between, between um, the hardware. So that's it for this one. If you're not subscribed to the channel, highly recommend subscribing. Cover a lot of things Final Cut Pro, Apple Tech, and filmmaking, and I'd love to have you be a part of the community. We just hit 30,000 subscribers and are marching toward 50,000 as we speak. So become a part of it, subscribe to the channel, and be here when we talk and uh, teach Final Cut Pro to uh, everyone who's a part of the channel. That's all I've got for this one, everyone. Until the next one, I'll see you all soon. Don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli.